go. Now, this is Flash somebody at the dork table. Take three. I've had a little trouble connecting with my computer. It says I'm streaming, but it doesn't light the um the when I hit the record button, it's not lighting up. The record button, I repeat, is not lighting up. I must have uh I might have a glitch in this here system. Or I'm beyond teachable and can't seem to operate this uh here fancy stuff. So if I'm broadcasting out somebody give me a yeah I'm live so I can continue. And uh, we'll just edit out this little long intro. Because by according to what I was supposed to do to make this thing work, um, it should work, but it doesn't have the red light on. Now, when Grim used the equipment, I had him on the team view, it sure worked. So, uh, still here, Vinny. Okay. Huh. Whoa, whoops, so late. Uh, Moose says she's still. Well, I'm not even typing in there. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Okay, now I had a little problem and uh, I was backed up. So I guess am I on here? It says I'm on, but the red light didn't show up. Okay. Ah, yeah. Ah, you think this is so easy, Mr. Beetle. You come do it. Okay, Mental says you can hear me okay. Now, the problem isn't about that. It's about if it's recording or not, because uh, I did the thing the way I was showed to work, and uh, when Grim did it, it gave him a red light. Now, I'm looking at the screen, and it says uh, the time I'm streaming, but it didn't give me the light but if I hit the red button again, it asks me if I want to stop recording. So, I'm in a, um, what do you call it? I'm having fun. But if the show's not recording, oh, it's a dummy light. No, it worked for Grim when he used it. Anyway, so you guys got the hellos. Everybody knows who's here and who ain't here. <laughs> Rob works taking off me. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, probably, but, you know, I you guys had a little mishap last night. You know how easy it is to uh, get lost, get kind of panicky when you're doing this radio stuff. And um, I see Grimner coming back on, so I think we're going to have a little chat on the airwaves. But, uh, yeah, you say I'm on. I understand that, but I don't think, I, uh, I don't think my equipment's recording it is what my problem was. And there's Grim on the wire. Let me see what's going on here. Bear with me on the technical difficulty road. We're going to speak with a man right now. <clears throat> Did I get you here? Didn't connect. See, there's having... Where have... Wait a minute. What's this about? Oh. There we go. What did I hit mute? How did I hit that? Yeah, we're having technical problems up the wazoo. It's something in the water, I tell you. See, now it's not allowing Grim to come through. So, maybe I'm going to stop the stream. Wait, give him a call. Let him try to answer it one more time here. Greetings. Yeah, that time it connected. Yeah, hey, you were on, for, but uh, just give me your password so I can make sure you're recording. Oh, the to the computer, right? Yeah, to the to the team view. Oh, to the team view. Oh, I let me open it again. So do I stop this? Okay. I see it's open already. Yeah. How do I do this? I don't know. Just click on it and give me the password. Oh, okay. Uh, show team view. I think there we go. Three. F like Frank, 8, 9, Z like Zag, G like Greg. I don't know what I could have done wrong. This is ridiculous. It doesn't shine on this side. I can't tell it's on. Oh, well, I'll 
I'm looking at it. It's, it's you're definitely recording. Okay. And it, it's in a, see down here in the in the lower part. Yeah. You're recording too. Yeah. Okay. Aye, aye, aye. Well, we just edit out this stuff or whatever, and we'll try to. Oh, bless your heart. I don't get it. Thanks. Yep, yep, yep. Well, that was my technical help coming in to rescue me from a problem I didn't have. But what he did, uh, what the deal is, is on my screen I can read things once I know they're there to be read. But uh, I was dependent on the light being on, and on my screen I'm looking at, the light is not on. <laughs> so, if you've never done this, I recommend radio to all you nerds out there in reallibertymedia.com land. You don't have to do it with a camera if you're, you know, like me, you don't care about being remembered or any of that. You just want your voice heard, you know. Put your shit out there and let people let people judge you and and see how... <laughs> See how long you take it before you crack like an egg. Well, actually, I'm just exaggerating a little bit because, you know, I'm not the most sensitive person in, on the globe, but eh, maybe I'm in the top two or three billion. <laughs> There's lots of competition out there. <laughs> People that... You know, know things, and they're smart. They they do all the right stuff. You know, and I've given a lot of conversation and a lot of consideration to this idea. We're we're all equal, right? But what, what they leave out of the equation when they're telling it to you is that you're you're fueled by second rate shit. Unless you're born into a silver spoon, and then even then, a lot of the shit that you get. A lot of that's crap, too. But they were experimenting on us, you know, all along the life's path with all this uh, technology and inventions and all this crap. And I think what all this stuff really means is, hey, look, the bankers can skin you for this much money if the, if the law forces you to buy this stuff. And that's what they do to us. And they got great names for it. Taxes. Hey, they got taxes on medical insurance. That's how they pulled that Obama shit off before I left. They said, "Well, it's not, it's not a punishment; it's a tax." Well, if you don't call a tax a punishment, what the fuck do you call a tax? Hey, look, I'm gonna name my next kid taxation. Well, that way everybody will hate it. I hope it's a boy or not a girl. That would be terrible. Can you imagine if your name was tax? Hey, tax. Mm. Mm. Hey, not every joke goes through my head comes out funny. But some of this stuff really isn't... You know, I laugh about it. I make jokes and all that. But I take it seriously to a... Mm, no, I don't. Maybe I don't. I associate with people that take it seriously. Mm. And I guess the course of my life took me down I don't give a fuck row you know and all these games that the media and the internet and all this join a group shit wants to sucker you into at the end of it you find out that well they told you it was this and they told you it was that and whatever they told you it was the opposite and now when something is immoral and unethical instead of leaning on legal now the freedom of state motherfuckers are going with mandatory in a in a free world. Now I don't know if they're doing it here or not, but you know at my age it's not like people are going to go, hey, that old geezer hasn't had his inoculation, so we better tie him down and shoot him up. And you know just to be simple about this whole inoculation bullshit story, to anybody on the Real Liberty Media that knows me. You know, through conversation or just see me around on the real liberty media dot com chat room. Think about this for just a moment. The very same people that will call you horrible names and lock you in prison for shooting a drug into your own body 
that may or may not be safe for you at the time. That's up to you. You don't know what, you know, unless you know where you get what you do with whatever you do with it. Well, to me, it's, these are the same people that will try to talk you into getting an inoculation that doesn't work. And there's more information about them not working than there is about them working. So, And the logic behind it is just asinine. I mean, if I am not uh, unhealthy, sickly, I'm going to get sick every time I look at somebody kind of person, What? how the fuck am I going to get sick just because somebody else is sick? No, they leave that part out. And then there's natural things like when you're a child and you get these little diseases that they're making this big shit, you know, game out of. These diseases hit you at a certain age to boost your immune system. That's what they're for. You get them, you fight them, you're a little bit miserable for a few days. Then your body develops, so, hey, this will never happen to me again. Da, 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 da. And you get these uh, cells that develop and boom. You're back in, you know, you're back in the game. Hmm. But now they've got the pub, the population convinced that you shouldn't have these diseases in life, so that your immune system can develop. They've managed to write this whole other dialogue, and just I don't know, safety and bacterial scrub the whole fucking world into a state of stupidity, you know. Is everybody out there afraid to get dirty that's under, what, 30 years old or 35 now? I don't even know what it would be. 15? Because mm -hmm. I grew up playing in the dirt. Fuck, that's what we had. That was the toy. You want to play? Go outside. Go have some fun. You know. And if you didn't have toys to play with, well, then go build something and get out of my hair. That's how parents were in my day. And now we've got this. Wow. You can't do anything because you might get dirty or you might hear a grown-up say fuck or you might see somebody smoke a marijuana cigarette and ruin your life. <laughs> now, keep in mind, the people that are pushing the inoculations are the very same people that convinced an entire fucking world full of intelligent people that hemp and cannabis are bad for us. And I still, to this day, I have met and encountered many intelligent people that frowned upon me. You poor soul and your devil's lettuce. What will ever become of you? You know, and it turns out all, all this time goes by. And we get this crap about, new studies have just indicated... What they don't tell you is those new studies were done in New York City in the 1930s by a mayor of New York, whoever he was at the time. I always forget to check his name. But he did a study about what the results of marijuana hazardous to the smoker. And the results came back, nope, everything's good. good. And the government, uh, the federal government above him decided, well, nobody needs to know that shit. We're pushing rayon and oil, motherfuckers. Come on. Get with the story. They're, they're not going to get it. See, if you don't convince everybody to tell the same lie, how could it ever work? You know? Well, but look at the confusion, all this legal, like, with, with alcohol and pot. Legal one day, and then the next day, magic of a pen. Hey, it's legal now. And what gets lost in the translation to the average Joe out there? Because I know Rob works and Grimm and Moose and, you know, the people that hang out a lot. You guys all get this. But, hey, you never know. There might be somebody picking up the dark table for the first time and never heard it, and that person doesn't know. The government just lied. Lied, 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 lied. Misdirected, made up stories, built a business called Prison out of marijuana prohibition. People have made more money off illegal drugs, legal drugs. It's all a bunch of crap. We don't need... If you got drugs in the front of the explanation, you don't need it. Drugs are man-made, as far as I'm concerned. Now, in the dictionary, they've changed it. According to the modern-day you know, explanations, you know, if marijuana can 
get you high. It's a drug. See, but what they don't tell you is to do yourself any kind of damage, you'd probably have to smoke about, I don't know, a ton of marijuana at one sitting. So, hmm, chances are with you that the biggest problem you're going to have from smoking the devil's lettuce is you're going to find yourself sitting in front of a Bugs Bunny marathon eating Doritos. And, uh, yeah, that's... But, you know, they've got movies to show you that no, no, people smoke pot and go on murder sprees and do horrible things to other people. And no, all this crap's always been about is to distract us from what the government's been doing collectively over the, geez, the last hundred and something years now. I think it really kicked off in about 1850 when they figured out how to muscle that polio shit in. You know, because if you can convince uh, what they call a society of intellectual people and brainiacs to go along with the horseshit that we've been put through in our fucking lifetime, I got I got a bridge I'll rent you. You know, you can even name it what you want. You can even pick the state or the country. I'll I'll deal with you. Uh, <laughs> it's too easy to to tell the bullshit lies. And then it's it's obviously too hard to untell the lie, and I don't get it. They're not even logical. Uh, name I could name five things in two minutes about what the system shows us that you know. In when you see it, you know you're not seeing what they're telling you. And then of course time goes on. Twenty years later, fifty years later, they tell you, yeah, you're right, but. Uh, well, we didn't want to put George Bush in prison that day, so we had to tell you this instead. And to this day, you know, while everybody's all snorkeling and sparkling and looking at Trump and his magic fucking wall, I recommend you be more aware of what you don't hear about. <laughs> like the... Oh, I went on about this the other night, but I screwed up on... Hmm, in a perfect world, and I was very not perfect, and I didn't record my podcast. So, I tried to do a little rant from the previous engagement. <laughs> I have read nothing but horror tales about your 5G, the wireless program the government wants to unleash upon the world, untested, and everything that you read about it. In, in a negative light says it does physical damage mm. now let's do this history thing one more time go back now if you got too many power lines you know those overhead power lines you can't live there why not cause it's dangerous now when they get into the definitions of the 5G, this shit's way more dangerous than that is. And they want to put more of it so that people can do things with, you know, less waiting time. Wow. I think some of these people need to stand in line to wait for a fucking cheeseburger maybe once a week just to be reminded that, hey, you're living in a fucking illusion. Um... Now, I'm lucky. I'm one of those people. I don't give a fuck for the phone. <laughs> um, I'm not all sentimental. People don't want to call me or whatever. The, I don't really care. I talk to them already. <laughs> I, know, I know who they are. So, reminiscing me, with me now today about the past is, ah, that's what the radio replaced. I don't, I don't need to do that anymore. Now, I can make a point about something that's up my nose uh, in the social fashion and use my own experience and tell you, well, this is why I see it that way. That's the nice thing about the radio, you know, because we can screw it up and have problems getting it together and putting it on and broadcasting and remembering to record it. But the ideas that we have when we do this stuff are priceless. You know, and I don't remember every word I've ever heard from all the people I've listened to on the radio. So I've come to the decision that the uh, the, the information itself is very uh, it's immaterial. It's not very anything. It's like tits on bacon. You know, uh, 
it's like a second coat of wax. It's okay. It's waxed already, but you want it more waxed, right? Uh oh, we have incoming from the wife. Thank you, sweetheart. And uh you know, life is just chock full of all these I call illusions, you know, because you see things. But we're not taught how our brain functions so that we can interpret all these things around us that we see. And I don't remember them going into any lengthy detail about, well, it feels solid to the touch, but <laughs> there are limitations. And then when I was in my teens, I'd see weird things on television, like some guy, you know, cracking up ten stack of bricks with one arm and he just hit it just ever so and <laughs> crack the center and all the way down to the bottom just like watching the Twin Towers fall and you just wonder is, is this real? did he really do that? now it doesn't matter to you know as a collective if he did or didn't it matters to the individual <laughs> the individual that that sees it sees it, and the individual that does not see it, does not see it, and where we're being fucked with so badly is, if you're not entitled to your own fucking opinion about something, even if you're wrong, that's kind of insulting, isn't it? I don't care for it too much myself, you know, when I voice an opinion about when you, when my anti-government, uh, anarchist, scum-thinking mind and I upset the apple cart because, you know, the status doesn't understand what anarchist means. It, see, the whole lifetime we've been dealt all this double-talk bullshit from politicians and church and education. And then you grow up. And some of us that don't get stuck in that freaking society game, we find out that, hey, the hippies were telling the truth, man. This thing's a scam. And I, I often spout shit like, no, nah, people don't care. And, no, they, I think they do. I think they're ignorant of the reality. The true, well, reality isn't a fair way to explain it. I think they're ignorant of the, of the truth of what situation they're in. And not told the truth. I'm not saying they're stupid. I'm saying they were lied to, misrepresented, uh, misled bullshitted uh, you name it I don't, there's probably 1200 words to use to explain how it feels to be uh, confined by this fucking monster that they call freedom you know if it's so goddamn free <clears throat> why they want you to sign everything why they got everything on video and that voice recording facial recognition thumbprints <coughs> What are they going to start asking for a sample of ball sweat at TSA next year? To really give people a, you know, good jolt when they go down there. I don't. That joke got away from me. But I got my wife talking to the dog in the background, and it's kind of distracting. Thank you, honey. Anyway, let's check out the real liberty media dot folks and see what's happening. <laughs> Uh no kidding. I've I've had uh I've had some real um struggles changing over from the Windows to the Linux. Linux is a little bit more difficult and uh I understand why. Uh it's easier to rely on Windows, but it was the Windows program that screwed me live on the air when my headphones stopped working. Could hear me but I you know well, how did it work? Anyway, I think I was doing a show with somebody, and we just lost it. didn't work. So, now this one, the Linux, it operates fine as long as I do the program in the correct uh, operating way. Things need to be done in a certain order. Windows is a little looser. And I think, uh, I was t telling Grim, I don't think anybody's going to think I'm completely insane with this. But I think the shit with the internet that's been going on, leaving people in the, you know, uh, leaving their equipment not working, maybe they're doing stuff behind their back, you know, and, uh, 
something all of a sudden needs an upgrade that you don't know it needs. So instead of telling you, hey, you need an upgrade to make your headset work, it kills your headset while you're using it, and then you got to figure it out yourself. Now, this is my my opinion of what I saw, because uh, the answer to the computer problem I had on the Windows was really simple. I had a USB port um, set of headphones, and all of a sudden it didn't want to accept this anymore. And Grim even had an explanation for why, but I've been using that headset since I started doing radio. So all of a sudden, the internet gets upgraded at my house, and I can't use my equipment. And I thought, hey, maybe they're just pushing me to the, you know, to the retail outlet to upgrade, and not telling me this. And if you, you know, if you look at history and how we get treated in business, that's not too far fetched of a, of an idea. Yeah, well, Grim, it's okay. To me, I know, to all you computer geeks out there, boy, if I give you shit and you think I mean it, no, 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 no. I I just don't have the uh, whatever the the patience or the input that would get me interested in the computers. I don't have it. I can learn it, and with repetition, I can operate it. But I don't have a love for it where I'm interested and I want to find out. No, it doesn't work that way for me. In Linux or Windows, I'm just getting to the point where every time I use Windows, something goes afoul. You know, it's like, wait a minute. Uh, I like balance in my life, like the dog. And I'm very simple. Just don't shift it to the left too far. I won't know where you put it. <laughs> That's because of poor eyesight and laziness. So, mm. now anyway, let's see what's gonna what's gonna rock our shorts. Because we got something brewing in France. At least I've been reading and seeing links on the internet about it for about two and a half, three months now. They call them the yellow vests. And uh, I'm not so sure anything's really going to come of this because weeks ago they were threatening to do a, a bank run on the Rothschilds. And I was a little upset about that because it was all over the fucking internet and everybody that could read could read it. Well, how are you going to surprise them if they know you're coming? First off. And then the day that it, it was supposed to happen, nothing, nothing was... What changed? Nothing. Monetary system still intact. You know, we're still in debt for what, two hundred and seventy-five trillion dollars, circ. You're the oh, communist. Anyway, my wife does not want to keep score on the tr on the world debt. I think I'll appoint somebody I I don't want to see uh, bored. Be in charge of keeping track. <laughs> that's going to be one busy job, huh? I mean, does anybody ever think about this, that these numbers are so astronomical, they're, they're asinine, and we owe them to, like, 300 people, and everybody else on the planet is going along with this crap instead of saying no more. You know? uh, the fear of the unknown. What will happen to us if the thing that we're that's fucking us right up the butt every day goes away. It would get worse. I would venture to guess that would be the uh, the cry of the zombie mind would be, oh, what are we going to do without our government? Well, sadly, folks, this was a long, long plan. This didn't happen overnight. This took generation after generation of beatings and torment and laws and prohibitions and taking over our lives at levels of reality that Johnny Average doesn't even know exist, like wavelengths and vibrations. Uh, putting it on paper under names that were uh, misleading, like Edison or Westinghouse, you know, the thieves and the... Uh, the pricks in our history that that took our freedom away from us and pretended to you know they pretended to support freedom and it was just a big lie because <laughs> here we are slaves to oil and it's unnecessary it's necessary because we got so many like what do you call them little mamby pamby whiners that 
they couldn't go without their phone for a week or two or a month or six months to straighten all this out. They'd, they'd croak. I'll be cut off from everybody. Well, maybe that's what this needs. Because the way it's being run right now, uh, we're losing as a collective. This is not showing any sign of progress at all. It's all degeneration. Just figure it out. Uh, I went on a rant about fluoride, so you guys are probably sick of hearing that one. But we got fluoride, we got GMOs, we got, I mean, negative, negative, negative. Where is the good fucking news? You know? I get good news. My wife made me a nice dinner last night, and this, that, and the other. But, I mean, that's Facebook kind of crap. I don't, I don't do that to the guys in the RLM every day. Brag about my wife's cooking? That's, that's not fair to the single fella. Single fellas got to eat those, you know, uh, what do you call them? Uh, Starbucks hot pockets and what what do they serve for food at Starbucks? Anybody know? <laughs> anyway, uh, Stalin for a shot of my elixir because you know I wake up in the morning thinking things like, "Gee, brain, what do you want to do tonight?" The same thing we do every night, Pinky, try to take over the world. And then I go, oh, that's my dog's licking my eye, making me crazy. But, hey, I had a dork moment because I've been so serious lately. It's it's weird, you know. But I'd like to, uh, I'd like to see the world understand the truth and apply common sense. What? This is not a contest about how much shit you read in a book and you can re recite. I memorize the encyclopedia. To what? Yeah, to G. Godzik. <laughs> I mean, what? Who fucking cares about shit like that? Everybody, because they're so impressed with little magic tricks. I mean, we have fucking wireless that's virtually a death sentence, if you think it through. All this crap we're using is all been proven through the, uh, I guess, the reality committee of life, it, it pro it's proven to be a cause of irreparable damage to your body. That unless you know some secrets to life, like baking soda, um, CBD oil, and there's a handful of other plants they're coming forward with now that have been banned because they're cures for this, they're cures for that. And they got this FDA and the CDC, and these people are lying to the public with every breath they fucking take. And the people in the public are so overwhelmed with life that they don't question shit. Crap, I questioned shit when I was young, and they kicked my ass for questioning it. So everybody around me went, hey, I don't want to be like that idiot over there that's always getting thrown out of school for talking and asking questions and being a smartass. <laughs> I was isolated from my peers at a very early age and uh, they were boring to me because they were so immature and, and I was an, you know, like a dork to them because I wanted to know why did they tell us this bullshit they tell us you know, I guess uh, TV didn't work on me I, I found the swimming pool and the outside riding my bike a whole lot more fun than sitting in front of that idiot box. I would do that when I was tired or when I was lazy. But when I wanted to have me some fun, it was get the fuck out of the house and go do something. Now I'm old. Now now I've turned it all around. Now I go out to town to go do something that we need and then spend my time in leisure. <laughs> but... Um, it's not uh, it's not a slave driven life that I live today. Uh, I don't think it ever was. You know, uh, I don't look at employment in the traditional form of the word employment because I didn't do traditional forms of employment. Uh, I was more isolated because of the tax thing. They told me, "Hey, don't sign up for this tax thing, and you won't have to pay." Now, there's a, a B side to that album, and that side is, well, people don't hire you so easily when they don't have to pay you taxes unless they you, you sign on and you work exempt and 
well, the kind of things I wanted to do for money didn't really, I didn't need representation or to go work for somebody else to do it. I could just do it. And there you go. If you don't beg them to take tax money, they'll never come knocking at your door looking for any because you're invisible. Ta-da! Now, unfortunately, we live in this world of illusion where people think uh, they got millions of followers on, uh, what do you call it, Twitter, and uh, like the tra- Trump. We have a 70 year old man and he flies around the world and he makes very important decisions for a lot of people <clears throat> and yet this twat is known this is what he does daily he gets on twitter and twits now when I was a young fella I looked up to the president. Mr. Kennedy, sir, president. Then they shot that prick, and then we had Johnson. Well, we all know how it goes. Johnson turned into Nixon, turned into Ford. Oh. And, the, you know, the pedestal that the president once was once on just kept getting chopped down lower and lower and lower. And now you just, the president's just some guy doing a job that nobody even likes except maybe two or three people. And the the thing that they like is not the man. It's the stories through the media about the shit this guy does. And it's clear to everybody else, this guy doesn't do any fucking thing. He's just a... He's a a front man for a really, really bad band. Uh, I think he's playing the bongos tonight live at the White House round table room. Hmm. Because, uh... Wow. Wasn't he the guy that did a TV show where they fired people at the end? Uh, What is the appeal to this guy, this Trump guy? Or Pelosi? There's another one. They picked her again for to be the minority speaker. The dumbest bag of human flesh I've ever seen with a microphone. And she's had the job since I was, like, old enough to go, Hey, what the fuck is she doing there? <laughs> so... <laughs> career politicians who picks them you know how do they how do they stay in there because there's always people sniveling and whining about who's in power well how do they get in power hmm. what do they got like a personality test you got to flunk to be able to be accepted into the political arena you know and then you got to sell your soul to Satan and go ah, I am allied with Israel First and foremost, Israel is my friend. I am not an anti-Semite. Okay, so you got all these idiots reciting ideas that sh- they should have been buried a-, a hundred years ago. You know, we've progressed, and this is the best we can do. We get led around the nose, you know, with chains, invisible chains, but they're chains. Getting fed bullshit stories about CO2 and greenhouse gas effects and moonwalks and Taliban taking down 9-11 bullshit like that and the further you go back in history the more you find out that nothing was true none of it now they might have made the, a few dates and they might have named a few players in the in the game correctly but the details don't they don't even make sense and I'll I'll back up that comment with somebody made the fractional reserve banking that the Federal Reserve Bank uses today our currency in America. Now, what that means, the government was on this day making their own money. There was, that was that. They printed what they needed or however they decided to get it. It was backed by gold. Then they had the skeleton crew of, you know, elected officials go in on a Christmas holiday and vote this crap in. Uh, and the fa- fractional, you know, fractional reserve banking practices are used by the Federal Reserve Bank. And it's for the last hundred and what, 105 years now, 106 coming up, we've been having people sell us as a government 
so are government leaders a product that they could make their self without the fee to make it on top of whatever it is they're buying so <laughs> they decided it was more intelligent for a country like this to purchase their money from a third party and give them a profit so every freaking dollar and every freaking loan ever made for a hundred years <laughs> <laughs> it's all been made up <laughs> there's there's nothing nothing real behind it except it's a promissory note that you're going to pay and human beings are you know unless you get too big we're basically honest cuz you don't want to steal from your neighbor that's not only is that stupid but it's stupid you know you don't want to steal anything but uh, think about this for a minute would you go to your next door neighbor's house and go in his house and go get a gallon of milk and leave and just walk out? <laughs> oh, the tax man does. <laughs> Any, anyway, but we're basically civilized. You know, we knock on the door and say, hey, could I get a gallon of milk? I ran out or something. You don't just willy-nilly do as you please because you got guns and ammunition. And a bunch of these lying pricks that wrote a bunch of stories and made books about it so that you'd have guidelines. They call them laws. <laughs> you know, the truth about all that stuff is so basic and so simple. No victim, no crime. Period. But we're civilized now, see? We've been civilized beyond understanding. And now you can convince a human being a living human being that by using certain words towards another person they're committing some kind of freaking heinous crime against humanity now in my day you know if you drew blood you were pushing it but still that wasn't always enough to piss anyone off you might have said something to deserve that smack in the face you don't know now nowadays you know you have to see shit you just hear it they're going to invade the United States from, where was that place? Nicaragua or Fucaragua or some damn country south in Central America. Right. So, <laughs> for um, two weeks or something, the internet was abuzz with the upcoming invasion from the south. And all that shit was to build a wall. You know, to get your attention on this fucking stupid, ignorant, asshole 2019 wall. Now, <clears throat> but what's going on behind your back while you're all sticking your nose in the wall stories is the government is writing laws so you can't stop 5G. If it's going to get stopped, it's going to be an act of violence. You're not going to be supported by the government because the government is writing the law so that you can't fight them with the truth. The only thing you could say in court that you want it removed for is, well, I don't like the way it looks, but they won't accept, well, this is bad for my health. It's being written as, you can't say that in an admiralty court. So, if you want to say that, you got to go all the way to SCOTUS to say it. And I don't think if we took up a damn collection, we could collectively all go to SCOTUS, one of us, backed by everybody else. That's how fucking expensive this mental mindfuck they call law is. And it's over what is obvious to those of us that have a little knowledge... Well, the people that are lazy, indoctrinated, easily led, pulled around by the, you know, balls, whatever you call it. I, I don't know. They're just manipulated. You could convince them that CO2 is bad for them and then we need to cut trees down to save the planet. Complete bullshit, opposite from the truth, works like a fucking charm. Now, you get on the radio, you say this out loud, and hey, most people think you're crazy. Hmm. Mm. Now you got to think about this side. If that is the positive result to this kind of input, then whatever I'm accusing the system of doing is being done because it takes a certain amount of apathy to 
listen to these things that we talk about on Real Liberty Media uh, Radio. And there's a group of us, too. I'm not, you know, there's plenty of people that do it. Uh, there's just, uh, there's a lot more available time than there is players at the moment because the public's not ready. They're not desperate. They're apathetic. Don't give a flying shit, but, you know, they don't they don't want to miss a Super Bowl. No, 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 no. Now I suppose I should be nice and have, you know, have a little, uh, have a soft spot for people that are indoctrinated, you know, and understand because I too, to some point, in some levels of this shit, I got it, and I think that I've got it more under control. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a bootlicker. I don't want to be a boot stomper. I don't want no part of that. And life kind of worked out that way because I guess that's what I was looking for, you know. And I'm going to stick with that. If if you're not happy where you are, things are miserable, and oh, the aliens this, and oh, the welfare cheaters that, and oh, the tweakers stole my car, and all this horse shit and whining, maybe you need to get the fuck out of where you're at and go somewhere else. But... Here's the drawback. It's the indoctrination into that game. You need permission to be a free man. Oh, here we go. Because, you know, if you need permission to do shit, where's the free part come in? You know. It's a wonderful story, you know, and it sells good to children, but when you hit the age of reason, you start thinking about why. Why do other people get so excited over being able to tell other people what to do? Hmm, I wonder what triggers that kind of sickness in a human being. That they're more interested in their daily life to uh, force. And I'm not talking about people who advise or help other folks with, Oh, I know how to do this, I'll show you how to do it. That's not the kind of communicating that I'm speaking of. I'm being specific about... Show me your papers. You know, that kind of horse shit. Because uh, that's wrong. You know, where do, uh, where do you fall down in life so low that to abuse other people as long as it's not you is cool? You know, that's the way I see that. Because it's always the folks that don't break the law. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I hurt nobody. Blah, blah, blah. Police! This man is annoying me. Have him under arrested immediately. And some people live that way. You know, they think their shit don't stink. Oh my God, they drive a sixty-five thousand dollar SUV, baby. And when the police pull them over, the cops are going to say, "Sir, what can I do for you?" Well, no, that's not what's happening. You know, the reality of it shows it used to be that way they pull you over and even kind of go hey man I'm sorry I got to do this but you were doing 70 and a 35 you know let's be reasonable here and now it's hey you were doing 38 in a 35 and we're going to give you a $200 ticket for that so you know safety are you fucking kidding me I don't think that if the car hits you at 35 or 38 there's going to be a lot of difference now, 75, you might not survive that one, but uh, did you folks know that in original law, the driving speeding ticket was defined as ending in an accident? So what these admiralty court pricks did over time was they just, they took a broad idea, like, hey, they drove 90 miles an hour and ended up in a wreck we're going to charge them with speeding. And they just chipped away at the 90 until it was 30. <laughs> Took them a few years, but they got there. You know, remember the speed limit when they knocked it down to 55? Fuck, I did 90 through, uh, what state was it? Nevada. It was 19, 1979. Man, there was 55 mile hour zones everywhere and all that shit. But we hit the Colorado-Utah line about uh, I guess dusk, 
it must have been about six o'clock at night. And I wanted to get to Denny's in Las Vegas and go have some some stupid breakfast or something. And I wasn't going to do 55 miles an hour and miss the first, you know, get the new shift come in when they'll make me a decent plate of food. And I, I must have been doing 90 the whole damn way. Because we were there by 4 a.m. It was a long road, too. I-15 to I-80. What was it? I-80? I-70. I think it was 70 that goes across Kansas. But anyway, long time ago, and things have changed since then. But the point is, uh, now, at my age, not only would I not waste my time and energy driving a car anywhere, <laughs> I wouldn't do 90 miles an hour. I haven't in years. But when I did it, I didn't feel any guilt or concern or what, whatever the fuck everybody else is all worried about. I was just going from point A to point B, and I felt like I was qualified enough to not wreck the fucking thing, and I didn't. And people go, well, you were just so lucky. Well, why? What has luck got to do with uh, having a tire blow out or being hit by a meteor? Is that is that how you gauge your luck? Really? <laughs> Then it's just a, it's another illusion, you know, because one man meteor, one man's meteor is another man's meatloaf, right, honey? Yeah, my wife said sure. Ha ha ha! I have been agreed with. But hey, wait a minute, are you mad at me again? <laughs> She's agreeing with me. What's wrong? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But you know, uh, I guess the 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 point I'm. I'm ranting on tonight is is the slow change how that we've been through over life. You know, if you're if you're in my age group, like Graham and, and Grimner and oh Frumpy, not Chloe. Chloe's a little younger. Uh, Beetle and Mental Pancakes. I mean, we're all in that age group where we we survived the the '60s and grew up in the '70s. And that was a wild fucking time in life. And every generation says the same shit. Boy, when I was a kid, you know, I had to walk to school ten miles, and I had holes in my shoes. And then the other guy, yeah, but I had to carry a burro. Okay, anyway. But, you know, everybody's got it worse and harder, and now here we are in this, I don't know, piss pot fucking pussy generation where everything's instant, and cell phones, uh, fuck. We don't even use money anymore. We just got these little cards and little bits of paper with numbers on them. It's very boring. But it's quick. But it's boring. I don't know how to... I can't really put another... Yeah, it's 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 not like a drag to go through. It's just very you know fast and all that. But it's not the same as handling coins and you know real money from the old days that we thought was real. That was fun. And until about 64, we even had silver coins left. Mm. But, you know, for our safety, because you don't want people to choke on silver, they uh, stopped making the, the coins out of anything that had any value. Started making them out of crap. And then when you think about how they operate this freaking coin business, these motherfuckers spend more money transporting the freaking coins than the value of the fucking coins. <laughs> they it never it, this whole thing is a, it's a it's a hole in the ground that if you work for the government you you throw money into it. You just piss it away. And the money as we grow older has less and less value. <laughs> and people <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna collapse. How many times has it collapsed since it started in a hundred well it's, let's go with the uh, fractional reserve banking that they started in thirteen. So they've done 105 years already off the same lie. And every time they get caught, they just print some more fucking money. Now they're trading $5 trillion a day. That's the five biggest banks on the planet Earth. And this is the story they're selling to average Joe and all these uh, economics geniuses, and, uh, mathematicians, and space people. All these fucking geniuses out there in the goddamn world and they're believing that it's possible to trade $5 trillion a day, and somebody's making money off doing that. 
where does the money come from? I mean, if we're in debt for whatever the global debt is, what are they doing? And why is it so hard to get anybody else to say, hey, yeah, you know, you got a point there. Because all I get is, well, we have trade. <laughs> no, we don't. We're held hostage. And they, they send you to these uh, prisons to go there to choose the poison that you're willing to subject yourself to. That's what I see. Freedom would be, hey, there's a guy on the side of the road and he's selling turnips and rutabagas and some asparagus, you know, vegetables, or maybe some fisherman got a catch and he's selling some fish. That's freedom. What we do is institutionalize fucking slavery. When I'm sometimes in the store, I just feel that, you know, I'm being a good little drone. I'm doing my my Danish responsibility. I'm not just grabbing what I want off the shelf and leaving. No, I stand in line at the end and pay for it like everybody else. So, uh, where's the freedom? This is this is the hardest thing to get across to anybody else. You know, because... Uh, we're we're so pampered by other people doing all the fucking dirty work and then we go to the store with a little card or we drive to the store with our little card our little $40,000 Mustang and we're driving to the store with our card and you go in and you see something and you go buy it because that's what you can do and people have really confused that with success they don't get it that's the control from the outside working you you know and I've been there. I had all, a lot of toys I've bought and sold and uh, given away and traded and whatnot over the years. But uh, I guess somehow or another I learned not to be so consumed by the things that you forget the people. And uh, it's real easy to do that, you know, because I like toys. I sit here in the house. I live with Cirque, and I spend an incredible amount of my time entertaining myself in my own little mind world. We're in the same room. And she gives me that freedom to do the little, you know, dorky things like my gigantic jigsaw puzzles. They're time-consuming, and I'm uncooperative when I'm doing them because I can't think and talk at the same time. So, hey, I get a little little brain time to keep my, my brain waves working. That's the way I see it. This... Uh, assist me to not vegetate you know, and become completely useless. Because I know that my way of lifestyle and the stuff that I've done and the, the way that I look at life is never going to be popular. But it's not about popular. It's about comfortable. You know? And I find it uh, sad that another man can look at the chains that are binding him and think they're good. You know, it's it's a sad thing to witness, and you can't tell them that because they're insulted by it. That their version of freedom and mine are different. Mine is in my head; theirs is in their ex- physical exterior, and they've got nothing to do. Man, they can lock you up in a jail, and you can still be free. It's it's in your mind. And I've been fortunate to encounter people that open doorways. You know, like uh to the wavelengths, to the resonance, the hertz instead of uh, RPMs, the upgrades in life. And some of these upgrades, I'm not capable of uh, grabbing onto them and re- immediately remembering them verbatim. I've got to go through shit over and over. you know. Uh, and sometimes it, it doesn't stick so well, like with the radio. But, if you're willing to look for a little bit of help, now this is the part of life that we're, uh, I don't know, it's right in front of your face, and for some reason most people don't see it. The power of the network. You know, you know this guy that knows that guy that knows this girl that has a cousin that works at the place that you need to go. And as life's progressed, I've noticed people are more withdrawn from socializing. The internet terrifies everybody. Oh, they're going to steal your identity and your blah, 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 blah. Well, 
If being online is more frightening than in person, what do you? Why would you want to be online? And if you got so much freaking wealth, you got to worry about people stealing it from you. Where do you find the time to hang around in chat rooms and play video games? And, you know, go out and drink coffee and shit like that. No, people that have a lot work all the time. And if they don't, it's because somebody gave it to them, and that's well, that's just luck of the draw, I suppose. But it's got nothing to do with deserve or uh, work. All these things were raised with these bullshit stories, like that Bush motherfucker. I mean, crying out loud, you know. When they ran the first motherfucker, what's his deal? Which Bush was he? Bush Senior. I never heard of a Bush. Not in my whole life did I ever read that freaking name Bush. And then when they ran the second idiot Bush, outside of his daddy, I I still had no fucking clue who's this Bush idiot. You know, I was so uh, distant from the political arena. My lifestyle and politics did not have nothing to do with each other. So I didn't, I didn't have any interest or knowledge about the background of this guy sitting in power, most powerful job on the planet, blah, 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 blah. Then in uh, 2011, I get introduced to this internet thing. And people are talking in chat rooms, and they're talking about Bush. And all of a sudden, I see this other Bush name come up. And I went, what? Oh, yeah, there was another Bush before... Uh, Senior Bush. There was Prescott Bush. Who? Oh, yeah. He goes back to World War II days. Made his money in oil. Trading with the Germans during World War II. And I didn't know that. I'm a 50-year-old man, and I'd heard Bush, Bush, Bush for all those fucking years. And didn't ever know that his father, the older guy, the grandfather, was... Um, such a two-faced piece of shit that he he you know, worked both sides of the game to make money. Then he's got two kids, a son and a grandson. They go on to be presidents of the most you know successful country on the planet. And no, that that was enough. I was finished. I mean, knowing the stuff was one thing. People telling me all these things over the years. These people can't be trusted. Da da da. On and on and on. To know it was one thing, but to turn the internet on and open a link from Bill Clinton apologizing to the American people for experimenting on them without their consent or knowledge, that was mind-shattering. I think that fucking floored me. And I tried to show it to people, you know, but nah. And that back in the days, those days, I was on Facebook and whatever there was. But over the time... <laughs> I, I've i never been one to kiss your ass just because you, you say you love God. And me and this Jesus freak got into an argument about pot. The pot's the devil's lettuce and it's bad and all that, blah, blah, blah. And I said, shut the fuck up with your stupid nonsense. Bob. And I got a suspension from FB. And I never went back. I went how can I delete the account? This is back in the time when you could delete the account. That's how long ago it was. And my popularity has never gone any fucking where on the internet. Always the same. Because there's only a certain amount of people that my lifestyle ideas are going to appeal to. And there are other people that doesn't. They're incidental. They're supporting the very thing I want to see go away. And the only thing that we do agree on is that this fucking monster is not going to die in my lifetime. Hmm? Now, I can accept that. And, okay, and it's kind of defeating, but that's in my lifetime. You know, there's going to be plenty of things after I'm gone that are going to continue. And one of them is probably going to be people with their fighting nonsense. Hopefully, if you can get to the bottom three you know, ideas that I've set forth all this time... Quit lying, you know, don't murder people and grow hemp. Everything else works out after it because those three things fix everything. Well, you can't prove it. Okay. I can prove this. Whatever we're doing is a disaster. It doesn't work. We're we're unindated in 
fairy tales and lies and stories and all this crap through the same process where they're supposed to be giving us information that we need to make solid, intelligent decisions. And they've convinced us to get inoculations with duck cum in it because it'll prevent diseases someday. Mm. Now, I use the word duck cum because arsenic and thimerosal were taken. Um, but the point is, is they're openly injecting human life forms, carbon-based life, with poison. We know it's poison, or they'll give you this example. Oh, we we just use it in the packaging. Well, there you go. That keeps it all separate, doesn't it? <laughs> How could that possibly get into the inoculation then? Uh, no contact with certain compounds is bad. And not that we're going to all die overnight either. This is a little bit more insidious. This What they're doing to us is uh, it's slow and painful. You know, instead of CBD oil from cannabis to cure cancer and baking soda and all these plants that they've banned <laughs> from growing because their seeds have a certain amount of arsenic that, well, there we go with the arsenic. It's all right to put it in the fluoride, but not in the cure for cancer. <laughs> no, we, with the cancer, we radiate you. <laughs> Come over here, my friend. And we have these very expensive pills. Now, they don't work very well. I think maybe two out of 2,000 actually recover. But, hey, you want to live, don't you? So, fortunately, I got introduced to the truth about Rockefeller medicine. And uh, now there's even doctors coming forward that are risking their freedom and their life, putting their self online, doing videos, telling people what they really think about the system that is so geared up to save us, you know. And if you if you think about it long enough, if it's so geared up to save us, why are so many people so fucked up? I don't remember this many fucked up people around me when I was a child. I mean, crap, there were 30 kids in my classroom, and maybe once a month somebody would be absent for a day due to sickness. It wasn't a common thing. There was very little of it. The older I got, then things started to change. You know, habits changed, too. I learned about ditching school. I didn't even know about ditching school until I was, like, 11. Never thought of it. Never occurred to me. I just went. It was easy. It was boring, but it was easy. When I was 11, things started to open up. And when I was 12, I learned how to get kicked out of class so that I didn't have to be there. And it would be like it was their idea. <laughs> eh, sometimes they'd catch me and sometimes they'd let it go. <clears throat> but here we are now. I can't remember two fucking minutes of school. I don't know what they told me. I don't know what they taught me. I don't remember any of it. But the shit my father taught me before I went to school, how to read, how to write, how to do um, like uh, multiplication tables, adding, subtracting, division... He taught me all that shit. Oh, well, now those things have uh, made survival easier at times. You know, when there wasn't quick labor jobs that you didn't have to fall in love with, like unloading trucks. was That was always easy to find. And, yeah, being little, they kind of look at you funny at first sometimes. But, oh, okay. Because if you didn't do the job, they weren't, you weren't going to get paid. So it's really no, nothing out of their pocket. If you tell them you can unload it and you can't, you're the one that's fucked, not them. And uh, that was just kind of like a unwritten law. You know, you do the work and they pay you when you're finished. And I never had a truck driver, you know, give me a hard time after I unloaded the truck. So uh, I don't know. I guess I grew up with a, a different set of values, a uh, different code than my peers that were, you know, going to school all the time. They didn't. They had no idea you could. <laughs> they had no idea that in, in a big city, any given city that you put me in, I'll find a loading dock and a truck driver that wants to take take a nap and give me forty bucks to unload him. <laughs> but now, I think there's like a, what do you call it? Insurance laws and oh, you could get hurt and, and crap. When I was doing it, I remember one night I was in a 
Powell, Paso Robles. I was in Paso Robles going south to Santa Barbara on 101. Sitting in the Denny's. The truck driver says to me, he goes, hey, you're going south. I'm going that way, going to L.A. And I said, yeah, I'm going to so-and-so. And so he said, yeah, come on. i got to stop to make before um, before uh, Santa Barbara. And he pulls into this, uh, what was that? It was, it was an orange juice drop, a Procter & Gamble site. Okay, so he pulls off into Procter and & Gamble, and he backs the truck up, and we're having a smoke, and the kid on the forklift is showing off, and he's doing all this crap with his forklift, and he runs it right into the back of the truck, and orange juice concentrate every fucking where. <laughs> he, he hit it straight on with his fork, <laughs> and we were laughing. But, see, now, if I, if I was... Uh, that age, whenever I was, I see seventy something, I guess eighty something. It was a, it was in the late seventies, early eighties. I guess about nineteen eighty somewhere in there. Uh, Twenty years old. If you did that now, those opportunities don't come up, and people don't look at them as opportunities. I thought, hey, a trip in a truck, and you unload somebody, and you get paid, and you're off on an adventure somewhere, go do something else, go see some new place, and. Those days are they're finished. You can't do it. Uh, Vinny was on the bus. You can't hitchhike anymore. You know, and it's it's not about age. It's about society's been uh, whipped. Movies and newspapers and links about how horrible we all are. Ted Bundy's going to come back and rape your corpse after he murders you for six months. Uh, <laughs> And I was telling Cirque because we watched these things on television. And when all this crap in America was going on in the 70s, I was out there hitchhiking all over the United States, one side of the country to the other at the end of it. And I never got picked up by no serial killers. I never got serial killed. Uh, no, there was no acts of violence perpetrated against me because I, I was hitchhiking. That never happened that way. But I read about it all the time. My poor mom, she, you know, if, if it was uh, <laughs> my running away days, that was my mode of transportation was the thumb, and I'd go north up I-5 until they caught me. <laughs> anyway. Now, as a, you know, as a matter of normal, I'm, I'm older now, and the travel bug's gone. But the people that that you know, replaced me who are 20 years today, 20 years old, they can't and probably wouldn't even occur to them to do the things that I did because they'd be thinking, oh, how dangerous and all this negative, negative, negative. And what I thought it was is, uh, here, I'll give you an example. This is what truck drivers were like in the, in the late 70s. Now, I had ended up uh, in Atlantic City. I'd met some friends and I found a band I liked and this, that, and the other. But I lived in L.A., but my friends were in New Jersey. So I'd go hitchhike to New Jersey. I'd spend two weeks in New Jersey. Then I'd hitchhike back to L.A. And however long it took, I kept out of the equation. I'd just stay two weeks and then hitchhike back. Well, one year, it come up. I think I did this for about a year and a half. Anyway, the, it came up on Mother's Day weekend. And I found out like Thursday afternoon it was going to be Mother's Day Sunday. And I went, oh, man, my poor mom. She's going to be so bummed because, you know, I usually do this thing, and I'm way over on the other side. There's no way I'm going to make it home. So Thursday afternoon, I figured, well, what the fuck? So I hit the Black Horse Pike, and I, I kind of ride to Philadelphia or some damn place. Anyway, everything's flowing. One ride leads to a ride. The truck pulls over, and it you chitter chatter with the driver and he's go, where are you going what the hell are you doing out here however they're going to talk to you and I told him well Mother's Day is Sunday and I, I figured I'd try to get home and see my mom but you know I'm never going to make it now and he was quiet for half the trip he didn't say nothing back to me and then about the because it was like an hour drive where he was going to to drop me off and about the last half hour he says you know what I got me an idea and then he got quiet again at the end of the, when he, just before he dropped me off, he gets on his radio and says, Hey, I got a fella going to LA to go see his mom. Somebody else come pick him up. I'm pulling over up right here, blah, blah, blah. And as soon as he pulled over, right behind him comes another truck. So I jumped out of the first truck into the second truck. 
And this went on constantly. It took seven dry, I think six or seven rides to get to L.A. to where I could call my dad to come pick me up because I was like 20 miles from L.A. And uh, I never thought I'd make it. <laughs> but truck drivers were, you know, you're going to go see your mama. Now, come on. Are you telling me a story now? And I, no. And they realized I was serious going home. And they helped me out. <laughs> and I ate and slept and, you know, the whole, it was like three days all the way to L.A. And uh, people were kind and they were generous and it made my mom happy. And now if a 20-year-old, you know, woke up in New Jersey three days before uh, Mother's Day and decided, hey, I want to hitchhike, that never going to happen. And I know that. I guarantee that. And I, I guarantee it because uh, human beings have changed. We've been hardened, you know, life experience and crime and all this negative, 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 everything's trying to fucking hurt you, inoculations and poison and this, that and the other. But see I'm the guy that used to go, Hey, I think I'm gonna go to Kansas today but I'd be in Michigan or LA or New Jersey or wherever I was, didn't matter. The place I was at was just a bit of dirt. So, the moral of all this crap, I would suppose, out of me is because there was a freedom to be had when I was growing up, and I did have the wherewithal to, to grab onto it and, you know, experience it, not just watch other people do it and tell me stories. I get to live my own stories. What I found out as I aged is. Very few people believe the things that I did actually did. And uh, I'll sum that up with, I was in a bar in London. In uh, What year was that? I think it was 19... It was either 91 or 96. I think it was 91. 91. Okay. So I'm sitting in this bar in London. And uh, there's a table. And people had... we kind of started talking to each other and the table had grown. A bunch of foreigners all over the place and some Londoners. And this one girl was at the table and uh, people, you know, it came my turn to say something and I, I said, well, if I told you the truth about what I do, you'd think I was just making up stories and you wouldn't believe it anyway. And then I stopped talking. And I went to uh, ended up in Florida about two months later. And the story to go from Florida to Phoenix to Baja and back to Florida again was well, well, from London to Phoenix to Florida. And uh, I ran into this girl in another bar in Florida. And she said, uh, hey, didn't I just see you in a bar in London telling me that if you told me where you go and how you get there, I wouldn't believe you? <laughs> So, it was the weirdest encounter of my life. It was brief. Uh, I didn't, you know, we didn't date or anything. I just met her again, and she reminded me, wow, you said this in a bar I was drinking at with you in London two months ago. <laughs> and by that point, I'd been all over the freaking map. So, now we've got the radio, you know, where everybody's rich and everybody's successful and I've got a five-bedroom house and three bathrooms and a four cars and a truck. And I'm the envy of everybody that I encounter. They all want to be me. <laughs> That's the Internet. <laughs> Let me tell you something, sport. I don't think anybody on the Internet wants to be anybody but who they are. I think that's the... The common ground that we share at reallibertymedia.com is the 90, say 95% of the people I encounter here are happy being who they are. Um, not too, uh, you know, there's not too much fantasy going on. Some of us hate, hate the popo and some of us don't. Uh, some of us hate the government, some of us don't. But it's pretty much, uh, a mental thing. You know, we don't, we don't need to compete about how big my house is, you know. I got 12 inches and my car does 97 miles an hour in second gear, SA. 
you know sure it does and sure what are you a fucking a cow sport <laughs> anyway enough of my comedy jokes we'll get back to the seriousness of the dork table yeah I haven't dorked for a bit I'd like to uh Thank all my dork friends out there in the reallibertymedia.com chat. Come out and, you know, I can't read the chat and garbage about my nonsense at the same time. I need a partner for that. But I'm going to pause and slow down. Go into second gear here for a second. Cruise this here parking lot. And say what they're talking about on the chat. And maybe, uh, hey, Miss Kate, <laughs> how you doing out there? Uh, okay, I blurped on the internet. I'm not messing with nothing. Uh, Moose is looking for promo codes. Mm. There's all kinds of chitter-chatter, egghead stuff going on in the reallibertymedia.com chat. Let's see. Now, I got off to a late start, so I would assume if it's 9.30, I've been on solid, what, an hour? I don't know. Somebody give me an idea, Grim. <laughs> uh, how far I got left, and I'll see if I can't do a whole show tonight here in Denmark Way, where the men are men, and the women are women, and stuff. Yeah, I don't even get to see all that colorful, uh, you know, crazy shit very often here. Maybe when uh, summertime, the kids are visiting their parents and shit. This is a retirement village, pretty much. So... You know, there's a lot of that strong family tie kind of living done around here. So the summertime, the kids come back and visit their parents or whatever. They got time off their school. They can come home. And they do. And it's relatively peaceful. You know, they raise a little bit of hell yelling maybe. Uh, it's not the kind of uh, not the kind of hell raising I did when I was a <coughs> young fella. But uh, these people are very tame. They're civilized, but they still know how to. They know how to party. They just don't seem to. Uh, well, we have neighbors from Poland. <laughs> Sometimes they get a little bit upsetting, <laughs> and and the woman across the street who's lived here for her, you know, a long time, uh, she takes it upon herself to police that shit. And these guys listen to her, you know. So it's not like you know they're unreasonable. They're just gonna do it until somebody bitches, and then they'll stop. And I think that living in a society where, um, sorry, I smacked my headphone with my hand, uh, but living in a, so a society where that kind of uh, level of freedom is is given, you know, if they want to play some loud, annoying music, okay, but you know, after a certain time at night, we're, eh, we're not so much no more. And I even remember one time getting in the mail. One of the neighbors was planning a big party about four or five houses down the road. Big party coming, loud music. We're apologizing ahead of time, <laughs> you know, but letting us know so that if you got a dog that's sensitive or if you're sensitive, that you could make arrangements to either not be home or get some freaking earplugs and, you know, just get through the night like a grown-up. Don't be a big baby. And then other times it's not appropriate, you know, people don't tell you and they get shut down when it, time's over yeah. mm. and this is the uh, I don't know what would you call it Denmark National Socialist it's not it's not America I will say that but I find the freedoms here are uh, they're taken I don't think anybody gives on anybody any of that I don't think the behavior is that way either I find, like, in the grocery store, when I go and there's somebody, you know, my age or older, and they, they seem to be having a little struggle lifting something. This shit gets heavy when you're older. Or you're some, To some people, they don't take as good a care of their self. I'll extend a hand to help them. And, and their response isn't never negative. It's surprise because they're so independent. They want, you know, they do shit their self. They're used to doing shit their self. But I'm used to being polite in public situations, and it's a dead thing. It doesn't, uh, it hasn't translated, it hasn't carried on. They understand what I'm doing, and they smile. They don't never tell me no. It's just, uh, it's not expected, it's not required. But I do find, uh, 
sometimes it can be appreciated. <laughs> woman, they uh, she she had a big twelve pack of sodas. And she couldn't quite pull it off where it was, so I reached over and grabbed it for her. And you know, little stupid tiny things like that that could be a, a big inconvenience to somebody else because there's little tiny stupid things that inconvenience me, <laughs> like uh, boiling eggs fuck, I can't watch a clock to save my ass, so I'm not going to do it right. But you know what? I got a partner that'll go, hey, want some boiled eggs? <laughs> so, so, for all the little crappy things that I can't be bothered to do for myself, there's always somebody else. You know, If it's not Cirque, it's somebody I run into in the street or in the store. And uh, Even on a cold day, People like to be acknowledged. They like to have their humanity recognized. It's traditional. It's good manners. It's not insulting, and it's not gender-specific either. Uh, when I pass people in the street, kids, grown-ups, men, women, the, if, if they avoid making eye contact, it's their shyness, not mine. But the most of them nod or say hi or something when you pass by. And as I've lived here, I've gotten more and more accustomed to it. So <laughs> I'd be in the city like what that idiot called uh, uh, from Australia. What was his name, Cirque, that movie guy? Crocodile. Crocodile Dundee. You know, hey, everybody, good morning. Or Eddie Murphy, good morning, New York. You know, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but, yeah, that's how simple things got. You know what I'm saying? I'm... Uh, comfortable and I'm familiar so uh, it, ticked, it takes a lot of the stress of day-to-day uh, -day life off I'm sure if I was working and responsible for all the things that life makes you responsible when you, you do that kind of stuff uh, maybe I wouldn't be such a happy-go-lucky kind of guy I don't, but I'm assuming I would I've always been like whatever the hell I am moody <laughs> <laughs> to a degree, maybe. But uh, very far from traditional in uh <laughs> in what society deems traditional, you know. Uh, I try to keep my word and I try to do what people ask me to do. And sometimes I can take that very thing and, you know, take it too far. <laughs> me and my wife have talked about that. Because a lot of folks really, uh, I once enjoyed arguing, debating, you know, fighting. Uh, uh. And as I got older, uh, no, not so much. The last 30 years has just been watching other things die, <laughs> disintegrate, uh, degenerate, putrefy, rot. And very few things improve with time. Now, I would not assume I'm one of those few things like wine that gets better in time. <laughs> Probably get older. Meaner and nastier than the one before me. Uh, everything's a double entendre smash word. Vinny, this is English. This language was bastardized long before I ever learned how to use it. It is both a, a tool and a lethal weapon all rolled up into one. Mm. And that's, see, maybe that's the thing I underestimate is my training to survive, let's say, financially in life was, uh, it was molded by people that were outside of the box thinkers in the first place. So uh, as much as the indoctrination that I saw, it, it was, you know, there for me to take. I was offered road B, you know, take door B and see where you go. And instead of the traditional school thing, I went through door B. And the grown-ups in my life, well, they told me completely the opposite of what the other kids were all being told. And as a result of that, my friends were getting older. You know, when I was 12, my best friend was like two or three years older than me. And my parents were like, well, what the hell is going on? You know, I'm 12 and I'm hanging out with all the teenagers, and it was kind of uh, it was strange at the time because people were segregated by age bracket. 
you know, we had this thing where uh, whatever grade in school you were in, because that's how it was until I was about 12. The grade I was in was the source of, uh, you know, associates. Whoever was in my classroom was usually, and we were in the class for the whole school year. So, you know, we'd form a group out of that class. And when I hit 12, those kids didn't really appeal to me anymore, or well, nor did I to them. Boy, I'll tell you, associating with me in school was, uh, it was like getting a black mark. People weren't, except for contests, you know, math contests or uh, competitions. Then I was pretty popular. But outside of that, you know, because I, I always smelled like tobacco, but I didn't smoke on the, pro on the property. Drove everybody insane to go, you know, come on, we're going to go have a cigarette behind the gym. And I say, what are you, stupid? I'm going to go out to the, the far side of the field. Don't don't encourage these idiots. What are you, crazy? <laughs> you know, and it, that, that kind of behavior, I think that led into, I found out that gym was just that gymnasium crap. Uh, what do they call it? Gymnastic, not gymnastic, but they called it gym. And, you know, they make us put on these damn uh, sweat uh, sweat suit things like shorts and t-shirt and all this crap and go out and do the same thing everybody else was doing and I did it a couple of days and then went nah I don't like this I'm not doing it so I just didn't and in those days it wasn't like the gym teacher could grab you by the freaking throat and say go do it or I'll kill you the guy just said okay well then you go sit down over there or whatever I'll flunk you so I was the only kid in the whole school that got flunked through a <laughs> flunk gym because I wouldn't participate in it. <laughs> and that, I think that's the beginning of my social downfall with society is the refusal and the act of defiance towards authority will follow you as an adult. 20 years from now, people are going to look at you and go, hey, you're that little prick that wouldn't dress for gym, aren't you? <laughs> and, you know, they convince you of this kind of shit that you, you've got this record and everybody has access to it that's important in life and they're going to all be able to read it. And then you grow up and you find out how. What are they going to do? They don't have that kind of technology. They're just talking about the future, I guess, because... Uh, you could write anything you want to on paper, but in those days, proving it, wow, half the time there was, uh, it was more of a pain in the ass for other people to challenge something because it would cost money in phone calls or weeks in writing letters to get a response. So in the beginning of a job that I would choose, if I was working for somebody else, I'd always tell them, hey, I got my way to do this, but you want to show me how you like it done so I don't screw it up? Every egomaniac prick job owner I ever ran into loved that line. They thought they wrote it. Oh, boy, that was good. And they would always, sure, let me show you how this is done, because people like to impress you with what they know how to do. And when I was young, I had that ability to mimic physical labor or uh, paperwork or ideas. Now, I can't do it with the computer today as I did it with the pen and the paper when I was young. And it's frustrating. <laughs> and you'd think this would be much easier, the Internet, than uh, doing the same thing in person, you know, uh, is virtually what I'm getting to, you know. Because on the Internet, we're all freaking, you know, got IQs of 157,000, and we're all gorgeous to, to the eye, and, you know, like I said earlier, we're all wealthy and comfortable and all that horse shit. Well, I kind of wonder, you know, if that was the case, why would we tell people about it? <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm just a old guy in the 21st century trying to remember the shit that happened that got me to where I'm at. And in that mess of stories is some stuff that, I mean, makes me feel good to remember that it happened. You know, that I actually did these things. Because they're so, uh, they're so tainted now. Oh, it's against the law. Well, 
Okay, I remember when smoking a joint in L.A. was against the law. I think they changed all that now. <laughs> so, <laughs> smoking the joint ain't against the law now. It's the amount of joint that you have. Well, isn't progress wonderful? So, they're not going to throw you in jail for the burning it part. They're going to throw you in jail for the possessing it part. And I challenge people, well, where's the freaking upgrade in all this? You know? And now the, the state wants to be the dealer, so they're going to send their shit to Monsanto. So Monsanto can give you a good quality product. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I read the the prices are like 35% higher than black market, which is probably a bunch of shit, because how do you, you know... You don't set the black market prices. The street does that. You know, what people got is what they're going to pay. And you, as I think, as a black marketeer of commodities, because I did like swap meets and things like that. So you don't think I'm a big heroin dealer out there, Hansel? I'm just saying. I used to buy and sell things in cash with no record, no receipts, and take them to the flea market and sell them. No. No records ever changed hands. Just the you know the day that you were at the place and the square that you rented to sell your wares. And we didn't have all this crap we got now. All this intrusive camera shit for your safety. Hmm. For your safety. So the tax man doesn't miss a penny. Hmm. But if you've seen enough movies, you'll know this. Danger lurks behind every doorway. Every window behind every wall. There is a villain waiting to thrash you and remove your wealth to enhance their own. Now, I call these pricks politicians, but I'm not very popular in that assumption. And I say this because not wearing a safety belt will cost you more money than the car you're driving <laughs> under the right, you know, wrong circumstances or the wrong police man stopping you. Uh, I was listening to a, uh, somebody on the radio talking about a, an older woman than myself. I'm 59, 60-odd years old. And they were pulled over for a tinted window infraction, which doesn't even exist in law but they seem to be able to use it as a reason to pull you over. And then, of course, they had to search. And, of course, she consented. And, of course, they found a amount of illegal drugs in her possession. And it turned out to be, uh, what was it, candy uh, something, sugar. Some kind of candy, candy what was it? Do you remember what it was? I uh, Grim, Grim or Mary did the story, but it was... Uh, Cotton candy. There you go. I lost it because it's been such a while ago. So this woman is in jail because the police don't know what drugs are. They just look at something and they run their bogus test on it. That's not worth a flying fuck. And it comes back positive and you go to jail because their tester is wrong. And this is a 65-year-old woman. Mm. So, you know... it. Supporting that kind of malpractice is beyond despicable. I mean, to think these people that do these things uh, and they sit in positions of power and control, authority, you know, and to praise their good work is beyond ignorant. You know, it's just sad that as a collective, people can't stand up to the, I guess, the oppression that they're under. They don't even recognize it, don't see it that way. A random stop because you might be uh, transporting illegal aliens. So they're going to stop you and look through your car. Where's the warrant? Oh, they don't need a warrant. Well, why not? You ever hear of 9 11? <laughs> and see, that brings me back to that Admiralty Court loop because if you've never endured Admiralty Court, then you're uh, you're gonna experience it someday, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you're lucky and you've never experienced it. I I don't know anybody that hasn't. 
and I was trying to do a show with Grimner about the uh, the legal ramifications of living on American soil, and <clears throat> what Grim found a link to it, and I I should have copied it, and I didn't. But what it was about was an av- the average Joe living in the United States, the guy that calls himself a U.S. citizen, member of state, voter, happy-ass motherfucker, whatever, on any given day, we are uh, liable to be accused of up to three felonies on any given day. And these are paper felonies. They're not, you don't have to go out and do anything. These are things that, uh, that you're doing without knowing you're even doing them, but they're illegal. And we're not talking this misdemeanor, you know, two years shit. We're talking five years where you're going to fucking sit and do two, two full years over a law that was written because some politicians that own some, you know, prison stock need excuses to keep this, you know, prison going. So they constantly, it's like a, like a hamster wheel. There's a very small percentage of people in jail that are in jail for doing anything that's worth putting them in jail for. But, if you watch enough TV shows, and you don't know enough about forensic medicine, and you got a PhD in every fucking subject there is, then you know that the police are there to protect you from bad guys. Unless, of course, you don't read the SCOTUS ruling that says quite the opposite of that. And that's what I mean. you got these TV shows that baffle and confuse people with, well, I saw it on TV. They wouldn't put it on TV if it wasn't true. But that's not true. They can say and do anything they want to on TV. It's entertainment. So what they've figured out how to do is set us with these ideas that you can push the idea if you have the right news stories to go along with it, like John Wayne Gacy killed 33 boys in blah, blah. Mm. And you know, I got suspicious about all that John Wayne Gacy shit because uh, they tore his house down. So there's no physical proof that John Wayne Gacy ever did in anything. There's the court record that said he did. And they got some guy on videotape that said his name was John Gacy. Maybe he was. Who knows? You know, I don't trust the sources that we get. <laughs> so, and there was another epic fucking tale. Henry uh, Holmes, Herman Mudgett, turn of the century, serial killer about 18, 19, 1800 to early 1900s, right in the turn of the century. And he was supposed to have built his castle, big city block, and it, and he would hire a, a group to start a certain part of the of a upgrade on a building or build a certain room a certain way, and then fire them in the middle and get somebody else to finish it so that the paperwork would not be complete. Now this is the story I read, and again. He supposedly murdered people for money, torture chambers, and this and that, all these horrific, horrible things that he did. But, again, the property was demolished, and there's no physical proof it ever happened. So, hmm, you know, and then I compare that to modern day, and I think, well, when I understood about Libya was that Gaddafi was... A, he didn't like the Israelis. He was a sworn enemy of the Jew. And he wanted to trade oil for gold. Not only did he want to, I believe he did it. And all of a sudden, he was a threat to national security and had to be removed from power. And if you've ever seen pictures or video of Libya when he was running Libya, it was a paradise. People were happy, and it was nice, and it was modern. Uh, nice new cars on the road, all the luxuries and trappings for everybody. And after the Americans went in there and fixed everything, now it looks like uh, Detroit. You know? <laughs> but the newspapers told us he had to go. And, you know, all this time's passed, and Hillary's been in the media for the past few years, all this. 
but how much did Hillary have to do with that? I mean, why blame her? Oh, that poor old relic. I mean, hasn't the poor old bat suffered enough? I mean, she's, after all, she is her. So, you know, I've gotten beyond wanting to imprison her. I just like to see her do 30 days in Detroit with no help from the outside. You know, eat out of a garbage can there, Mrs. Clinton, and see how it feels. You know, just uh, don't mind the rats. <laughs> and an ankle monitor, so she can't, you know, she's under surveillance and responsible. Can't go without outside the boundaries. Yeah, bitch wouldn't last three hours. But, see, other people, their conditioning tells them that revenge and punishment should be mandated by Mother State. Well, uh, these people showed me over the years is they can't be trusted. The state lies like a motherfucker. So they're going to tell me, yep, we're putting Hillary in prison for you. And they won't. They just tell you they did. Where's the proof? I saw it on a video. <laughs> you see everything on a video now, so it's true. Now, hold that thought for a minute, because a couple of weeks ago, I declared to the dork world that my understanding of the word proof to we, to me is I like the answer. I believe it. There's proof. I don't like the answer. I don't believe it. Where's the proof? You know, so it's all subjective and we're, we're all bullshitted and conned into if you're part of this group and you believe this jargon then your life will be like this. And what, what a bunch of shit. I mean, fuck's sake, does anybody just live their life anymore? <laughs> no, we can't, because you know the internet doesn't allow it. You have to join a group, you have to support a cause, you gotta fight cancer! You know? And, like Mary's told us, you can't say there's a cure for cancer, the FDA will go, hey! You can't do that. Not because there isn't one, it's because it's not FDA approved. Well, gee wonder why we've got an FDA that refuses to approve a cure. Well, do the math, people. The ones that know, I won't put you through this again, you know. And the ones that don't know, that live in denial about it, you know, because, oh, no, the government is good. Look at all the wonderful things they do. Look at the tweakers under the bridge. They're all fucking happy. They're doing the state-sanctioned drugs, and they're not bothering anybody but each other. Yay. And we can watch it on TV as a form of entertainment. We're free. Oi. Mm. Bringing me back to that, you know. If you're so free, why are you enjoying the suffering of other human beings? You know, when I look at links about, say, Palestine or Alabama, <laughs> it's all the same. It's just so um, disappointing to see people treating each other so badly when it's not necessary. And I know it's not necessary because I live in a place where I don't communicate well because I speak English. And nobody physically hurts me because I can't do what they want. <laughs> but where I'm from, it's a different story. You know, and I think people are just, they're, they're, uh, What's the right way to put that? War, they're war, war weary. But if you might not even be aware of it, because it's so common in your day. You know, but since this 9/11 thing, God damn, every fucking day for all these years, war, 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 drones, drones, killing, 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 terrorist, enemy, enemy, enemy. And I've came to the decision years, years ago that all this crap that they tell us is just to take your mind off the fact that, hey, we're going to force 5G on you. And, you know, we, we thought this one through, bitches, like we did with fluoride. We're going to tell you how wonderful it is and how it's going to help you fight global warming if you participate. And we give you free phones and cell minutes and this gimmick and that gimmick. And then they're going to shove it on people and there's no way to fight it. So we're going to be stuck with it. And all it's going to do is bring rain because people are going to get violent over this. This is the one. I mean, of all the shit I've ever 
seen in life or read on the internet in the last couple of years. I think forcing the 5G on a, on a public that you they can prove it at this point. They'll go, wow, people are sick, and they are, and it is since this happened. And they're going to stop with their, well, we need to do a study. Well, let's do, do study this for 20 years, and we'll talk about it then. Uh, if you haven't learned that game, and you, you know, you're still gullible enough to buy it, I hope, you, uh, I hope you talk to somebody that can slap some sense into you, because it's a losing game. But, we do like to play a losing game in this life, don't we? Let's see, where are we at on this? I'll try to go a half an hour, and that'll be give or take, to, uh, with my miscalculations and my misreading the links and the things and the stuff. Uh, I don't know. It says, uh, well, if you go by the time on the stream, I don't know. I'm all confused. I don't have me one of them edgy vacations. I have to figure things out as I do them by God and country. You know, what's wrong with that? Why is everybody so stuck on safety and knowing what's going to happen tomorrow? Oh, I need my I, you know, I need my life planned out for me and protected. Man, I come from I want to wake up in the morning if I'm lucky and see what's going to happen. And now we've got uh, rules and regulation. <laughs> and if you don't abide by the rules and regulation, Heads will roll. People will suffer. There will be a price to be paid. And when you look at all this crap, rules and regulation, and it's about what? Climate change? <laughs> Climate change. Now, when you got the Pope going to the U.S. Senate and speaking on the, on the floor, then you know that you lost, you lost a long time ago when you see that happen. If, if you're me. Now, if you're not me, you might look at that and see it as a positive thing. Wonderful stuff going on with the church and the state all schmoozing together and making a nice, frothy mess for us all to drink. And I came out of it thinking, holy fuck. You know there's 65 million Catholics in the United States. And the Pope is telling his believers, or whatever they are, underlings, or however you judge that Catholic stuff, he's telling them all about global warming. And the Pope is out there to his people, and supported by the United States Senate, preaching a complete fucking lie to his followers. And if people don't think that's going to create a little frothing mess at some point... I don't see how it couldn't. I don't think people that are religious... Uh, <laughs> for one thing, they show us they don't forget. And I'll tell you another thing they show us. They're not very forgiving. They're violent, detestable, authoritarian, boot-fucking-stompers. These religious fanatics. And it's not all religious people. It's the fanaticals, you know. And out of 65 million followers... Can you imagine 10% of those are the fanatics that I'm concerned with that will protect their Pope if you should disagree with what he says because that's their Pope. And man, we should be beyond all this crap by now, but we're not. No, 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 no. What have we got? Hey, i got to ignore this idiot. Hold on just one second here. He's tying up the... Um, main feed with nonsense and it's in, it's bothering me give me a second uh hold on i'm coming back to the radio in a second but right now um ah oh, thank you yeah there was just some text on the main feed that was very distracting i had to do something about that in a quick pinch now i'm happy the clap the was that's the corporate lame ass propaganda that's grimner's we got quotes from some pretty interesting people on the real liberty media dot com. I think uh there's been quite a few people come up with their own version of you know I'm not for this, and my favorite is still Rob works, and they all suck. He doesn't pick on any one person he hates them all equally, 
Eh, I might be using that word loosely, too. I don't think Rob hates anybody. I don't mean to say it like that. But your disapproval of uh, authorita, you know, and how willing people are to lay down and turn their throat up to this fucking void, it's insulting to my intelligence. I assume from reading your, your text over the years that you lean that way. There's something wrong with people that are so willing to accept such a negative in their daily life. But w what they don't realize, the ones that do it openly, it's always aimed at somebody else. You know, They're not protecting their self. They're actually looking to uh, uh, attack somebody that's breaking a law. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> that just goes to show you some people do not understand what law is. Uh, not to the level that the uh, my peer group, let's say, the outlook that we share regarding law. It's mumbo-jumbo. It's bullshit. It is a fucking game. And without the guns and the bullets and the, jet and the, you know, the, the chains and the cells, all that toys, the props they've got to work with, who'd put up with that shit? Fuck that. A hundred years ago, they just shot you back. No, now. They don't even want you to have a weapon. Oh, no, no, no. Guns? Do you smoke pot? You could be a danger with a gun. I don't know how. I think if I was smoking pot, I'd be less of a danger with a gun than if I wasn't. <laughs> At least if I was smoking pot, I wouldn't want to touch the damn thing in the first place. Now, if I was drinking, that might be another story. I'd get drunk out of my mind and go, hmm. I wonder what your kneecap would look like if I shot it. <laughs> because drunk people do insane, stupid things, such as what I just described. It's not out of pocket. Now, people that are on pot, you know what they do? They get nice, and they get honest, and they, they don't so much lie, try to be bullies. No, 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 no. Potheads, potheads are basically nice people that need an excuse not to slap the stupid off your ignorant face so they smoke pot to calm down so they don't become the asshole that they're looking at <laughs> it's a catch-22 and then making it illegal was just wow that was conning people into believing that pot is some kind of a uh, makes you go out and do horrible things that you would never do under any condition. Yeah, sure. No, that's alcohol, people, and pills. Mm, mm, mm. I defy any of you to smoke a marijuana cigarette, the devil's lettuce, all by its little lonesome self, that badass motherfucker marijuana. Just take it on, one on one, and say, marijuana, I'm going to smoke you. <laughs> And then when you're done smoking that, why don't you tell me how violent you feel and how you want to go out and conquer the world and put people in jail. Oh, no, no, no. no. Potheads don't, don't think like that. After you, you burn that anger out and you start to feel good, <laughs> the shit like that doesn't even interest you. Mm. Now, the reason it interests me on the radio is because there are politicians making a fucking ton of money off the public because they make things that are victimless crimes crimes and the public in their infinite fucking wisdom they challenge nothing as a group like houses we're all crickets because there's no support to stop anything there's only support to continue this shit and it comes from every fucking level of this goddamn authorita and, in, and until we collectively turn our back on it ignore it destroy it, whatever it has to be done, will be done eventually. But until something is done, we're stuck with this crap. And this crap is vicious, it's violent, and it's lethal. And we've got people in you know, seats of decision arguing if vaccines are safe. Okay, Now, if there's any argument to be had, there's all the reason in the fucking world right there to not do it. If there's a re somebody resisting, the way I understood growing up, well, 80 people want to do it, but these 20 say it's crazy. Well, fuck the 20, we're going to go with the 80. And that's what we got. And the 80 are misled, misled, lied to, misdirected, 
you it's a mental fucking masturbation that I guess once you start it must be hard to to stop <laughs> you know uh, i don't i I don't have very much experience at following, so I'm judging what I see based off my you know my lifestyle. And my lifestyle tells me that, you know, you don't need to be a violent prick to accomplish nothing in life. If anything, being a violent prick just makes people not like you. And then behind your back, they're going to do stuff to undermine what you're doing. Now, in my history, in my experience with folk, when I'm doing the things that I do, and my intentions are clean, which they are, my results are good. So if I don't go into a, a situation with nasty fucking ideas in the back cooking and telling people oh I'm going to do all these wonderful things but what you're really there to do is fuck them over well there you go but some people that do that are still successful hmm. the Bushes the Clintons shall I continue or do you get the point You know, there's even idiots out there that think Hitler was anything more than a banker's shill it doesn't fucking matter what you think of Nazi Germany in 2019. You know why? <laughs> because you're living in your own version of what you read about that happened in the 19 fucking 30s. But the public is told stories and they're given all these pretty pictures and distractions and football games and Grammys and movies. And Come on. What does it take to go, wow, there's something wrong here? Well, for all of you that do, and all of you that understand, or possibly get whatever version of it you get, I'm just disappointed in the person that refuses to even look at it. You know, because I could be stubborn like that and say, well, just because they make pot legal doesn't mean I'm going to buy any from them. But isn't that my right? Well, no, because you're held hostage legally. And if you want to acquire this particular fucking thing in life, there's only one acceptable way to get it, and that's through your government. I don't get why. What is, why? What is so important about controlling every, you know, it's to the point of it's like every little thing. You know, but they, they started out years ago saying, Pot was the gateway drug to use heroin. <laughs> and then when they got pot on the top of the list, then they started telling people that, you know, uh, what, let's see. Yeah, pot with heroin. No, they started out, I had it reversed again. Heroin was the gateway to use pot. And then in time they reversed it and heroin was the goal. You smoke this joint and you'll be strung out on a street corner blowing cats for... Uh, are you out of your fucking mind? And then all this crap people talk about like, uh, oh, they were mixing pot and speed. Okay, I've been smoking many, many years now and I've been around people that have been doing many, many drugs. And the one thing somebody that was doing speed ever asked me for was a hit off my joint. Now, for those of you out there in, you know, pretty wonderful land that never, you know, broke a law or was around anybody that broke a law, uh, speed freaks and coke freaks that I encountered in my youth, my young adult days, the last thing they wanted to be around was weed. But if you read newspapers and you watch internet links, they always cross the two together. Methamphetamine and marijuana. Yeah, that's like telling somebody, you know, I filled my car up with premium gasoline and I was really in a good mood, so I put some sugar in it just to make it run better. What? You, you, you would know. You don't put sugar in a gas tank. Well, it's the same principle. One drug is for one thing, and the cannabis is for another. They bring exact opposite results. So one person doing both at the same time. No, that's TV. That's TV and too many Willie Nelson stories. I smoked Will with Willie last night. Yeah, right. What has Willie been ever been arrested for? Tax evasion? <laughs> Tax evasion. It's because he signed the fucking paper. 
And poor Willie, he didn't get it. He didn't know that. You know, they get you through your signature. That is your consent. Until you sign it, you haven't consented to anything. But you got to go through, um, I don't know, some kind of legal assistance that's not full of shit to find that out. Because the story and the reality are not the same, folks. I don't even think that the income tax law, it was never ratified. It's not a law. It's just an agreed-upon rumor. And they've managed to uh, enforce it with violence. <laughs> Threat of violence, violence, and prison, and fines. And who has the funds to fight this monster called federal government? You know, they've got endless resources. It doesn't take much to hire some dumbass to you know, threaten you with a gun. Put a badge and a suit on him, and he thinks he's something special. You know, until it's them, and it, oh, whoa, I've been shot! Help me, help me! They all cry like a bunch of babies. But uh, that's a whole another story. Where are we at on time here? Well, I'm almost uh, done a whole show. I think I'm going to stop ranting at you, RLM folk. Call it a night here in Dorkland, and try to do the uh, closing. Uh, post-production jibber-jabber that I must learn to continue my podcasting programs. And I'm going to do it. I'm working on it. I've got notes and I'm practicing, but it's so overwhelming. And, you know, like I said to Grim earlier, uh, they were having hardware malfunctions on their show. And I'm not pleased that it was happening. I'm relieved that it's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> if the you know if the hardware can fuck grim over well i don't feel so bad about you know being in a position to need help it's kind of uh i don't know it's like finding out that the fractional reserve banking loop is just a story another lie yeah we live in oh i don't know we live in our own little um bubbles of existence i suppose and some people I don't. They're more uh, plugged into the exterior crap that they're shoving down their throat than others. You know, because I've seen Moose come up here a few times and say, you know, fuck the government and other folk, and I think the same damn way. But the few of us that do, we're still, you know, we're still in the reality of life where the bullies got us by the balls and they're still armed. So, hmm, I don't know. Then, then there's all that gun law bullshit. And, you know, very few people give any consideration to people that intend to do harm. Don't give a flying fuck about registering nothing. You wouldn't even know they had it. Uh, there's more ways to illegally get a gun than there is to legally get a gun. Uh, it's international. You read about it in the paper. You read about it on the internet. You see links. But just remember that information we're fed is from the same fucking people that supply us the debt attached to our fiat currency. They're the same people that put fluoride in the water for your health benefits. Inoculations, taxes, police, FBI, CIA. Get it? You know, to the new guy out there that's never heard anybody, you know, talk openly or about government, if there is anybody. You never know, because we're on BitChute and Spreaker, and we're all over the place. And if we're not being, uh, what do you call that, put in the back, you know, ignored, so people don't find out we're here. <laughs> it's it's very uh, unpopular to have an anarchist-minded point of view towards the political theater. You know, we're always getting ridiculed and insulted and abandoned because you anarchist scum, you can't be listen. You know, you don't listen. Hmm. Well, no, it's actually the opposite of that. We we listen very well. That's what the that's the common bond we share. Is that among, above you know amongst the the loud mouse and the real liberty media that spout the nastiest things about government. Those are the people that actually are being honest. You know, if you're praising this freaking beast that's 
doing so much damage and destruction. I don't. You know what it is. Uh, mm. You're not seeing everything. You're only seeing what you want to see. And maybe that might be the way you look at me. I'm not sure. I don't really care. I'm just looking at it as a possibility so that you're not pigeonholed. And, you know, this is just your price to pay for hanging out on a freedom-based site and being a voter is to be ridiculed for what you do because you're the cause. You're the core of what is wrong. <laughs> and uh, with that, I'm going to say thanks for hanging out at Dork Table Insanity time. <laughs> the Torque Table Podcast. Uh, teeth Paste. I don't know. It's called something. But, you know, they got us. They, they just got us. We're like sitting ducks, and they can pick us off whenever they want to. And it just with the Internet, it becomes more and more clear every day that something is horribly wrong. Whatever something is, if you got that idea in your head, identify it and do something. And sometimes, folks, doing something is not doing anything. It's a matter of interpretation. And uh, we've got coming up in the morning on the reallibertymedia.com, we got Grimner coming on with the blues. And then after he's done whipping us into shape with some decent music, we play trivia. Sometimes we play trivia and listen to it simultaneously. They call it multitasking. I call it, I can't think when I'm listening to good music and come up with the answers to the trivia questions. But, to those of you that can do it, and then after that, you got Hal Anthony. Now, Hal's the guy that knows about the law. He's got a good, uh, solid foundation. He knows what he's talking about. He knows how to deal with it. Uh, he tries to guide people to the right road, to the path that they need to go on, legally. Um uh, if you're in the game legally and that's the road you want to take, I recommend Hal Anthony. I'm behind the woodshed. And then, after that, the very next day, we got Monday come around. You know what happens on Monday night about 7 o'clock on the East Coast? Grim breaks out his leftovers. <laughs> he started a new program. He does uh, stuff he couldn't get to on the Freakers Ball with Moose. And he does it on Monday night and does a little commentary sometimes. And very entertaining. I like Grimm's outlook on the stuff he reads. Very good show. And Tuesday, I'm coming back on Tuesday. This time I'm, I'm working my way into not fucking the production up and actually record In a Perfect World. <laughs> Tuesday night, uh, 7 o'clock in Denmark, 1 o'clock on the East Coast. And Wednesday, we got Graham Z comes on with the rocket chair at 6 o'clock on the East Coast on Wednesday and Friday night. Now, Thursday night, I do a midnight show my time called 20% Off <laughs> because, I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was a funny title. And then Friday, Grammy Mary, and then after Grammy Mary with the rocket chair, we got Freaker's Ball with Grimner and Moose, or Moose Girl and Grimner, depending on your way of that you like to hear the word said. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to let you guys get back to your wonderful nights and afternoons and mornings out there in Radio Land. Roger Wilco, over, and, ah, uh, wait a minute, can't get my mouse over, out, <laughs>